Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining another episode of the Educational Leadership Podcast. We have another very special guest. And before we introduce our guest, I want to give a shout out to our co-host, Corinne French. Hello, everyone. You're in for a real treat today. I cannot wait to get started. Yes, all of Corinne's friends are coming on. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was going to say write in the comments, but they can't write in the comments. Okay. <laughs> before we introduce our guest, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Ideal Impact. Ideal Impact's given hundreds of millions of dollars to public ed around the great state of Texas, over 700 million given, over 190 di districts, zero out of pocket to your district, unrestricted funds. Um, what else? They, uh, yeah, it's unrestricted funds. You can use it for teacher salaries, uh, security, whatever your district needs. Doesn't involve teachers, doesn't involve taxpayers. Sorry, doesn't involve taxpayers, it does involve teachers because mm -hmm. you can get increased their salary. Uh, so reach out to I Do Impact. That was a horrible intro, so I apologize. Anyways, if, if your district needs some money, reach out to I Do Impact. Okay, Corinne, you want to introduce this guest as well? Oh, because... I love when you throw that my way. <laughs> yeah, you said my friends. I have some of the best friends on the planet. Uh, former, tr I was a former trustee and, and getting to know school district trustees in the state of Texas has been probably one of the best leadership journeys and areas of service that I ever experienced. And so I have a fellow trustee who's a current trustee, Hado ISD, Terrence Owens. Welcome to the podcast, Terrence. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. So Terrence, just so those listening in, could you share a little bit about your background? Uh, yes. Well, uh, personally, I've, I've been married, just celebrated my 31st anniversary this past Monday. Uh, yes. We have two wonderful kids who have gone through K through 12 uh, through Hutto. Actually, my daughter's graduating this next next Thursday. Um, so I have uh, professionally, I'm a licensed physical therapy assistant. I do home health in, in homes for the elderly, broken hips, knee replacement strokes. <laughs> you name it, I do it. And I've been in that profession for 31 years. Um, currently have been a resident of Huddle for 22 years, have been on the board uh, going on my seventh year. I got reelected back in May for my third term. Uh, Congratulations. Very thank you. Very active in our in my community. Currently, I'm involved with the Huddle, Huddle Citizens University. So I'm trying to switch hats a little bit to learn a little bit more about city government and how that relates to ISD. And so I can just bottom line be a better trustee. Um, very passionate about my community, very passionate about being a servant leader. Um, feel like those steps have been ordered for me, and I want to continue to serve in all capacities. Love it. Love it. So what are you most passionate about right now related to public ed or maybe at your district? Uh, growth, um, opportunities for our kids. We just passed a half a billion dollar bond last Saturday, and we're in the process uh, having to do a superintendent search um, that was announced uh, yesterday. So uh, passionate right now about the new chapter that we're getting ready to go through uh, here at Hutto, whether it's new facilities, equity in our facilities, uh, finding the next superintendent who's going to be able to see that vision for our community and lead us into the next five to 10 years. Love it. I love, love it. I love the idea of servant leadership is so important. And you are a lifelong learner and you take all of your work at your district and for your students to take it seriously. And I love that so much about you. I have so much respect for you, so thank <laughs> you for being on this today. Yeah, I, I've been blessed with a, with a job that I work for myself. So I'm, my schedule is very flexible. So whether I'm at a football game or a orchestra concert or theater, I try to make myself available to be able to witness all the good work that we're doing here in Hutto ISD and to be able to be that narrative that provides positive input and, and, and positive um, things that are going on in public education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's something, Gary, I mean, that's something that why we do this podcast is we know so many wonderful things are happening and we want to give a voice to that. Um, you mentioned growth and a bond. I want to congratulate you mm -hmm. on that bond. It's a really big deal to pass a bond. I know from personal experience, mm -hmm. um, and so congratulations, it takes lots thank of extra you, work. You, yeah. And it was a, a 6% six, six uh, approval rating, pretty much Wonderful. for all three propositions. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very thankful for the community to believe in us and what the work we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, a big tell deal. Us, 
Yeah, tell us a little bit more about that. So that's a that's a tough process, right? To, to yeah. Get a so uh, with us, we passed the bond in 2019 for 197 million. Uh, think about it. We probably we went through that money by the end of 2022, all based on growth and equity. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, looking at the demographics and the projections, uh, we are probably going about eight to 900 kids a, a year district wide. Uh, based on demographics, our elementary schools are pretty much at capacity. We've had to order seven portable buildings for a middle school. We're in the process of building our third middle school. And so the bond proposition A was mostly for eighth and ninth elementary school and eventually build out our second high school, which is at capacity right now. Um, a lot of equity and from uh, renovations to our older high school, technology safety, uh, and then uh, we have a academy called River Horse Academy. It's our alternative campus and our DAP campus, and those both uh, programs are in portables. And we felt like it was a need for them to put them in a brick and mortar, plus give our administration a little bit more space. Um, sometimes those programs, well, the, the alternate program. Sometimes it's look, has been looked at negative, and we've really worked hard to make sure that is a, an, uh, an opportunity of choice for our kids to go to is if they don't want to follow the traditional path. So, um, like I said, that was a proposition C that was not necessarily um, voted on by the, the committee, but the, the uh, administration felt it was important to put it on there. And so, you know, at the end of the day, the voters had a choice to vote it up or down, and they, they believed in, in, the, in those programs. So... Uh, hopefully we can get that eighth, ele eighth elementary school going in the next year. And we have land for eighth and ninth. Um, and so, you know, with Samsung coming down the road and all the growth that's coming, it's just, uh, I don't mind a little growing pain, but I don't want to get too far behind. Mm. I'm, oh, go ahead, Gary. No, I was, I, I was just curious. So like, uh, there's a lot going on, it sounds like. And um, a lot of those things are, needs right you just mm -hmm. you just need those things is that the point with the portable buildings and everything else going on that it's a need what, what are some of the bigger vision as far as wants go like you know if you were if you are to have you know you could have anything you want what, what, what would the what would the bigger vision look like for your district uh, for me performance art center with a collaboration and partnership with the city and maybe the county Make it in a somewhat an event center that offers that's multi-purpose to offer uh, an opportunity for meeting space, um, increase the the space and the technology so that we can offer better theater. Um, our high steppers are not able to perform uh, competition here because of the space. Um, so that would probably be one of my bigger wants or needs um, for the community. Um, would love to partner up to have some type of, not a notorium, but necessarily maybe partner up with the YMCA um, in providing some type of facility. We have, we only have 12 kids on our swim team, but they're very active, very, um, very competitive. And I know that notoriums are very expensive. So being able to partnership um, with the city or someone to kind of bring that, that arena into, into the community. Um, and that's something I plan on working on the next couple of years is just trying to figure out how we can partner up and, and present those things. Um, we would love to see our our um, our welding and trades um, expand. Um, our fine arts department has been really, really big. So maybe a competition gym would be really beneficial for us. That's interesting. So with the performance arts and the partnership, the YMCA and the welding and the trades, if let's say your district had all those things, what, what would that what would that do for the district? Um, you know, with anything, when you look at a, at a community, you look at the school districts first and how, how what they offer and what they can provide and how well they are. Um, I think that would just enhance um, our community. Um, it would enhance um, job opportunities, not for not just for our students, for employers. Um, to help develop that pipeline. We do have a, 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 a Temple College, what we call UCheck. It's like four different uh, institutions in one building. And so continue to provide that pop pipeline to them, like for welding, plumbing, uh, electricians, um, just, uh, yeah, like, yeah, just being able to, to, to provide that. And I think that would benefit the community more than anything, just having kids having options. And that's another big, big thing I'm, I'm advocate about are passionate about is that when a child comes to school, I want them to come to school 
yes, they get an education, but there's something they're passionate about, whether it's fine arts, whether it's welding, whether it's football, basketball, um, comic book club, esports, bass fishing. You know, these are all the things that I really try to advocate uh, that we have in our schools that our kids have choice um, on what they want to uh, participate in. And personally, I think when a kid has some ownership in those areas, it makes them more accountable to the work that needs to be done. Yeah, that, and that's such a good point. It, and it's an overlooked <coughs> one. It, it got me thinking about back to my uh, high school band days a little bit, uh, being in the being in the band there. And I, I mean, I don't know if I would have made you know the grades or got into the college that I wanted to without out band. But it, it, it's a good point as far as like that. Uh, I don't know if nexus is the right word, that connection point where, where it just brings everyone together um, mm -hmm. and, and connects people to the district, connects students to the schools, but also connects when people graduate, they can, uh, you know, they have options, like you said. So, I, you know, that, make, that makes perfect sense. So uh, a lot of times when we're thinking about school, and I was actually thinking about this earlier, we think about the fundamentals, the academics and that sort of thing, but we forget about how to apply those things sometimes. <laughs> and it's such a critical step. And it seems like districts, and maybe it's because I just wasn't familiar with, as familiar with districts, you know, years ago, but it seems like there's a conscious effort to make that connection from academics to life after school kind of thing. It's, um, it seems like that's a, that's a constant. You know, those community partnerships, that, you know, application, that, you know, Corinne, what were you thinking? Well, I first, I like that you asked Terrence that question about, like, what would you dream big for your district? Because I think that, I mean, you're, you're, you're proving a point that I think that all, all trustees have to, they, they have to know their A, B, and C. Like, what, what do we do if, with this budget? What would we do if we got this budget? What, would we, what are we dreaming for? You have to be thinking down the line and not just for what's happening that year. And sometimes the trustees will have a more longevity than a superintendent. The average superintendent might stay for what around maybe the most seven years or something like that where it's trustees will have two and three and four terms. And so I love that you asked him that question, Gary. As a former trustee though, I wanna know Terrence, what kind of encouragement do you have for other trustees? as they're making decisions like this? Do you have some, some tips, things that have kept you going? How do you stay? Well, I, uh, well to be honest, I, I struggle. I struggle with uh, keeping myself motivated because you know the small minority of negativity tends to speak out a little bit louder than the majority of those who support you. And that was very evident uh, with this bond election because it seemed like the, the majority of the negativity was it's just a very, very small group, but they were very vocal, very against our bonds for multiple different reasons. And so as far as the encouragement comes from, is really lean, leaning in on my other board members and us building each other up and reminding each other of, of the work. Uh, leadership TASB has been great, especially the alumni and the best class of 2018. Uh, the, you know, leaning on them, especially leaning on you, Karina, just getting in a room with like-minded um, like minded people who are, who are there for the right reasons and their why and leaning on them uh, for that encouragement um, and knowing that we are doing, doing the right thing. We're doing the best that we can and, mm -hmm. and it's really is about the kids. And so whether it's advocacy in my community, whether it's at the county level or at the state level, um, mm -hmm. just using that, that encouragement and just knowing that, man, our kids are our future. Mm -hmm. We got to get this right to to an extent so that we can help the next generation. Mm -hmm. You mentioned. Me of, oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Gary gets to talk about Aggies. They have this this group Aggies. They all love their school and they just. Well, you know, I, I see so, I see the diploma in the back, Gary. So I just kind of figured that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's... so whenever I get a chance to have my people for leadership has to be, especially when I prepared, you know, 2015, we did a, such a good job preparing for your class, you know, oh, okay. so the okay. best class of, um, you know, I, 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 I never, I, think, I never get invited to these fancy events that he doesn't, to, by the way. Just so next it. time, uh, Terrence, next time I'm in town, we'll make sure we invite Gary. All I, right. <laughs> I think that it's, it is so important to have a network of people that you can lean mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. You mentioned leaning on your other trustees and your your board, and I think that's so important. But the and I thank you. Your friendship means it's important to me. Also, I think that there's only one way to do it, and it's with other people. 
someone mm -hmm. yesterday said, um, a former guest or a past guest said, when you're holding hands together, working on something, it's, it's a lot harder to point a finger. Mm -hmm. And I love mm -hmm. that. Um, it was Steve Van Maitre, a superintendent, mentioned that a couple of days ago on our podcast. And I think that holding the hands, you get, get together with your board mm -hmm. and you, you, you decide what you're going to work on. You follow that plan. You work the plan. You lean on other people. And sometimes other voices will be uh, loud and mm -hmm. hurtful. It's not mm -hmm. easy, you know, when mm -hmm. you're a leader. But you got to do it. You got to keep doing it. So, yeah, it's us. interesting you say that because we have a we're having a board workshop tomorrow from one to five. And Corinna, you know our board president, Billy the Judas, mm -hmm. and she does a, a great job with these workshops. Mm -hmm. And she just reminded us to make sure you wear comfortable clothes, which means that she's going to have some team building activities that are mm -hmm. going to be probably getting outside, doing some things that that's going to get us out of our comfort level, but also help build us uh, in a way that we can serve the serve the ISD. Yeah, and, and I want to mention something about that. Billy was a, a, a guest on our podcast last year and it was beautiful. Every time we have a guest that I know or don't know, basically every guest ever, I end up crying. Something ends up making me just so, the, my emotions, just so excited for the work that we're doing for all students. But doing that extra work, a board workshop, People don't realize we're not getting paid to do mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that your career, your personal career allows for some of that work. But what kind of advice do you have for someone who maybe their career doesn't allow for it, but it's still important? Are there some good work-life balance tips or um, read, the, read the board book every Friday night? Like, is there something that you figured out that could well, be you know, for someone else? Yeah, with, with me for been on seven years, I'm kind of, you know, I can kind of, not really have to spend a whole lot of time. Uh, but, you know, for someone who's who's either a first year board member, just knowing that you're not going to know everything and don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, one thing I was big on the first year was to spend time with leadership, superintendent, whoever, ask, maybe ask some of those questions that you're not sure and maybe get an answer ahead of time before the meeting so you're not really holding up the meeting. But also, mm -hmm. don't ever be afraid to ask questions. Um, if, mm -hmm. if if a good board and a good ELT department is going to understand that and is going to encourage and and and, and nurture um, you you that person wanting to learn, um, yes, we get our board book, uh, our agenda uh, late Monday or Tuesday, and then I have a couple of days to go over it. I meet with my superintendent Tuesday before the board meeting. Make sure if I have any questions, mm -hmm. anything I've learned from community. Um, if you're someone who works from eight to five, you you you, you got to pay the bills because school school boards don't get paid. So you want to <laughs> make sure that you're taking care of your household financially in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, and then just be available when you can to be available. You know, I've mm -hmm. got other board members who have even more of a flexible schedule than I do, and so um, getting on campuses, um, learning the different departments, just getting out there, being seen being heard and being available to listen to people is probably the biggest thing. And mm -hmm. um, it's going to affect your your life, your family. It's going to affect your relationship <laughs> with your wife, especially if you have kids in the district. I can, very, I can probably write a book on that. Because <laughs> me and my work, me and my wife, 31 years, but we see things differently. So, um, I, and, and then with kids, if you have kids who are involved in different things, like my daughter's captain of the drill team. And has been on the drill team for the past four years. And so separating yourself, that's another thing, separating yourself from your, a board hat to a parent hat. And I've been- I was just going to ask that. Is yeah, it, being, is we've it, been really good about that because my wife mm -hmm. is on the booster club and we have her, an understanding that that's you, the booster. I don't want to know anything. I don't need to hear any <laughs> drama. <laughs> I don't want to hear the kids are not getting along with each other on the bus no. on the way back from the football no. game. You handle yes. all that. And so yeah. I've been blessed for the four years that she's been on the high steppers that hadn't really had a whole lot of drama. So you have to be your daughter's dad, your wife, you have to be the spouse to your wife. But you, when you are a trustee, you have to think of all the students in your district. Yes, yes. And if you don't, her. then that's not that's not doing the best yeah. for that. Role. And I'll be honest with you, she's probably I wouldn't use the word suffer, but. She, she had to endure some things that mm -hmm. if I wasn't on the board, I could be more engaged in it because I did not want to show not necessarily favoritism, but mm -hmm. making sure that I'm looking at every, every, every program 
mm-hmm. every kid, every opportunity, every challenge that's going on. And so, mm-hmm. like I said, I'm very grateful and thankful for both of mm-hmm. them for allowing me to do the work. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. So we, you, you touched on a topic, a, a subject a second ago, that it seems like a common theme with, with a lot of the, the podcast, which is interesting because you think about technology, you think about you know the, the pandemic that happened. Mm-hmm. And it's relationships, like one-on-one human interactions with mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with technology constantly evolving and the ability to do Zoom calls like these, right? And, and it's just, it, it's, it just, I'm just wanted to point that out. It seems like, you know, relationships are becoming more and more important when, you know, some people think that, you know, with technology, they're not. So I, I just find that interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to you, point that out. Yeah, I'm in a unique position because I do home health. And I do home health here in, in Huddle. And I'm not afraid to tell people after a couple of visits, I don't usually don't hit them with it right off, but uh, somewhere along the line, there's an opportunity for me to mention I'm on the school board. And so it, it gives them an opportunity, whether it's the, the grandparent or the daughter who has two kids in the district. And, you know, I always use that as an opportunity to let them know and, and make them feel comfortable. Um, and so my, my, biggest, my biggest speech is always be an advocate for your kid. And that's how you're gonna get the results. Uh, when I attend different events, I always wear my name tag, I always wear my shirt, and I always sit next to people I don't know. Aww. And so it's giving them an opportunity, just for me, I love to talk, so mm-hmm. I can yap it up with anybody, but giving them an opportunity to have conversation. I've had some great conversations, I've had some hard ones, but I think they walked away knowing that, you know, hey, that guy really listened to me and understands me, and sometimes just follow up, but you're right, relationships and getting out there and meeting people one-on-one instead of behind a keyboard um, is very important to me. Yeah, so so important, those meaningful relationships, that human-human interaction. Um, well, we got the last question. I know we're running short on time here. Last yeah, question of the day. This is the most difficult one. Hope you're ready for this one. <laughs> He's got it. He if, got you were it. To, if you were to have someone else come on the podcast in public ed, who would you recommend? Um, well, let's see, have you guys had Anna Cortez from Maynard? Yes. Okay, let me think of another one. Um, well, we can always tell her that someone asked again, and we can have yeah, her again. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if I had anyone in my, cool. on my board, it would be Felix Chavez. Um, he's a, he's a been on the board. He just got reelected in May, went unchallenged. Well, this May, this past May, he went unchallenged for his second term. He's, um, uh, very um, a good advocate for the hip, for Hispanic population in Huddle, which is around 48, 49%. I think it's a majority. Um, he's a small business owner, um, three kids through the district. Good guy. He's involved with the food pantry. Um, we, we're kind of alike, so we get along real well. So mm. uh, he's, a, he's another good person from my district. I would really, mm. really want to recommend and then maybe, and then another one would be James Madlock from our district, who has really stepped up from a legislative purpose. Um, we have a Central Texas School Board Association, and I was the uh, I was vice chair, but I just if I don't have the time, I don't like a title behind my name, so I stepped back. And James it works for the Travis County uh, Accounting uh, Department, so he's down at the Capitol, and so he's been very instrumental in the last gosh, month and a half, um, speaking uh, to the news, news, newscaster. He's been on the news, just been a real advocate uh, for public ed in this, in this session and along with, uh, mm-hmm. um, with some of the other trustees from Leander and mm-hmm. Cedar Park. So those would be awesome. wonderful. For, Thank yeah. you. Those are wonderful yeah. suggestions. I yeah. appreciate that so much, Terrence. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, we will reach out for sure. I just want to thank you for being on the podcast today. Very exciting to have yeah. you on today's interview. Corinne, thank you for being yes. an awesome co-host. And mm-hmm. before we close out, we do want to give a shout out to our sponsor one last time. Ideal Impact has given hundreds of millions of dollars to public education around the great state of Texas and probably other states pretty soon. I don't know if I should say that, but it's true. And then over 190 districts in Texas, right? And uh, zero out of pocket your district. So if your district needs more funding, reach out to Ideal Impact. And for those of y'all that have been tuning in, stay, stay tuned for future episodes of the Educational Leadership Podcast.